Hey, what is going on, guys? My name is Vampire Design, and today I bring you some gameplay from the map of Radiation, and of course we're playing some Domination, as we always do. And this is some 64 in 1 gameplay on the best motherfucking map on Black Ops. <laughs> Not really, but it's definitely one of my favorite maps. I know a lot of people dislike it, but I like it a lot, so you see a lot of gameplays of me on this map. But before I get into Vampire Design's Stardom Sidum for week 7, I just want to go over some of the gameplay you're going to be witnessing while this video is going on. And it's going to be starting off with me talking about the FAMAS. Yes, I'm using the FAMAS. Haters, trolls, I don't give a shit. Hate on me all you want. I use this gun a lot. I have over 30,000 kills with this gun on my Xbox Live account alone. Um, I have over f almost 16,000 on my PS3 account. Uh, it's a good gun. I don't like putting myself at a disadvantage. and um, So I don't really give a shit. Haters, leave trolls, whatever. Leave comments. I don't care. Or I'll just delete them and then rape your family members. I really don't care. So <laughs> Now that's out of the way. Um, also, this is very campy. Uh, this is how I play 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, you will see in this video while I'm going over the stardom setups for week 7, I almost painfully wait for people to come around corners. I'm constantly looking at my mini map, and uh, I play very, very defensive. I end up going 64-1 and one in this game, and it would not have been possible if I didn't play the way I did. I should have done a lot better. A lot I made people rage quick because I'm on the fucking beast like that. But uh, regardless, this is how I play. I think it's very intelligent. Is it campy? Yeah, whatever. I don't care. It's campy, sure. Uh, but... Pretty much, I, I take all my hate as, you know what, you couldn't get me out of my camping spot, so I don't really give a shit either way. But anyway, I just want to go over that gameplay with you a little bit, because I do get comments once in a while, you're a camper, well no shit, I am a camper, and uh, you're using FAMAS, well no shit, as long as you have two eyes, you're not a complete freaking retard, I am using a FAMAS, so just get over it, this game's 11 months old, so it's beast gameplay nonetheless. Um, if, if you guys are loyal and uh, understanding subscribers, I'm sure I, almost every one of you guys are. You're not going to have a problem watching this gameplay. So, Without further ado, let's get into Vaughn by Design, start, start em, sit em for Week 7. Alright, and before I get into who you guys should start and sit for Week 7, let's go over Week 6 results. I'm going to give myself a 6.5. I, I, I'm pretty hard on myself when I give myself these these scores, and a couple of the names that I messed up on, Ryan Terrain, he got shut down against the Eagles last week, uh, He's done, he had the hot hand the last couple weeks, and the Eagles finally stepped up the run defense and pretty much shit on the Redskins, so sorry about that one. The next one is Jeremy Curley, now I did say that he may or may not do dis decent in this game for that week. But uh, he is the number three receiver for the rest of the season, so he may have some good weeks, but last week he had like one catch for like 13 yards or something, so I apologize for that one. Uh, I told you to bench Brandon Marshall. He did not score, he didn't have an enormous game, but he did have like six, six catches for 100 yards. So if you benched him and it cost you your win, apologize, but he, I, I don't, depending on what kind of league format you're in, he probably didn't get you much. Fuck that guy, by the way. Of course the Blackbird goes out. Right as I'm climbing that ladder, but you'll have that. And the last one is Frank Gore, which is the one I really messed up on. He had a field day last week. So, once again, uh, I'm giving myself a 6.5 out of 10. Not the greatest score, but it definitely was an okay score. Hopefully, I can improve this week for you guys. Now, the first person I want you to start this week is Ryan Matthews, running back from the San Diego Chargers. He's going up against the New York Jets in Week 7, and... Matthews has been on a tear all year. He's a dual threat running back, which means he catches balls out of the backfield and rushes very efficiently, uh, very much like what Didion Tomlinson did back in his early days with San Diego. He only has one 100-yard rushing game out of five games this year so far, uh, but he gets a lot of catches out of the backfield, like I said. And the Jets' rush defense has been subpar at best as of late. Uh, I expect him to have a good game against the Jets this week. The second guy I definitely want you to start this week is Miles Austin, wide receiver from the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, he's going up against the St. Louis Rams this week, who are just putrid all around. Uh, he's definitely um, Tony Romo's go-to guy when he is healthy, and Dallas is kind of struggling with their receivers right now. A lot of them are hurt. So uh, I would definitely start Miles Austin this week. I expect him to have about 100 yards receiving, maybe a touchdown or two. He's a safe bet to go with this week. Third person I definitely want you to start this week is running back Jackie Battle from the Kansas City Chiefs. He's going up against the Oakland Raiders this week in Oakland. And Jackie Battle is pretty much filling in for uh, Jamal Charles being injured all year. He's out for the year with a torn ACL, I believe. And Thomas Jones is just old. He's just not producing. Uh, the first game he started this year was last uh, two weeks ago, actually. He did a bye last week. He had 19 attempts for 119 yards, put up some decent points. I expect him to do the same this week. They're going to lean heavily on the rush. Um, so I would definitely give Jackie Battle a chance if you've not picked him up already. 
Fourth guy I definitely want you to start this week is DeMarco Murray, running back from the Dallas Cowboys. The rookie out of Oklahoma is going to be starting in place of Felix Jones. <laughs> Watch this replay, by the way. That guy, I don't know where that guy came from, but... DeMarco Murray uh, is a rookie at Oklahoma. He well, he may not start. Tashard Choice may start, but DeMarco Murray is going to get the majority of the, of the attempts this week. Felix Jones is out with an injury for at least a week or two, uh, and he's I think he's going to do very well, especially up against the Rams this week, so p make sure you put him in your lineup if you didn't pick him up already. Fifth and final guy I want you to start this week is wide receiver Laurent Robinson from the Dallas Cowboys, and I just realized this, as I was saying that, that that's the third Cowboy I told you guys to start. I hate the Cowboys, but they're all good starts. Uh, Laurent Robinson's probably available in the majority of your waiver wilders. He's been filling in great for the injured Cowboy receivers as of late. Miles Austin is back, but he's still going to be the slot receiver. Make sure you start Miles Austin and Laurent Robinson if you have either one of them. Okay, on to the people I think you should definitely bench this week. And the first person is Tim Tebow, quarterback from the Denver Broncos. I'm a big fan of Tim Tebow. I think he's going to be a great quarterback. Just don't start him this week. It's his first start this year. Just give him time. Don't release him. Don't put him back on the waiver wire. Keep him. Just don't start him unless it's an absolute must. I don't see him doing very well this week. There's still a lot of questions at wide receiver on that team. So just bench him for right now. Second guy I think you should definitely bench this week is Plaxico Burris, wide receiver from the New York Jets. Burris and Mark Sanchez have not been on the same page all year. Uh, and they're just struggling. They're going up against the San Diego Chargers, who are one of the best teams on defense this year. Stay away from him until he can start producing some decent numbers. Third person I think you should bench this week, and I'm, I mean, I'm sticking to the Revis Island thing, is Vincent Jackson. He's going up against the New York Jets this week, and Revis is going to be on Vincent Jackson. Jackson is a phenomenal wide receiver. I like him better than Brandon Marshall. He may do well. He's a phenomenal receiver, but the... the, the um, with Phil Rivers struggling this year, he's on my fantasy team. I don't think he's a 100% safe bet to start. If you have some better matchup options on your team, try to start them over uh, Vincent Jackson for this week. Fourth person you should definitely bench this week is tight end Dustin Keller from the New York Jets. He's going up against the Chargers. Keller started the season on fire, but the last two weeks he's been non-existent. Uh, keep him on your bench until he starts producing again on a more steady basis. Fifth and final guy to stay away from this week is QB John Beck from the Washington Redskins. Beck lost his possibility of starting in the offseason against Rex Grossman, who's garbage. And the guy hasn't started since 07. He's winless. Stay away from John Beck. Guys, I'm out. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Peace.